What's up guys, back for another Q&A video. I believe this is number four, and I'm gonna start doing these more often. So let's get into it. All right, so our very first question for the day comes from Catriona Talbot, and this person writes on my video, The Circle of Fifths Explained and Demystified. I had heard of the Circle of Fifths, but had no idea what it was. Just yesterday, I learned the broken chord melody, which I now realize is based upon, you guessed it, the Circle of Fifths. So, awesome. I'm glad that you watched the video, and this has been kind of a surprise popular video for us. We didn't expect it, because often, the Circle of Fifths can be kind of intimidating to some, or, on the flip side, it can be kind of boring to some. Uh, it gets a bad rap, to say the least. So we're pumped, to actually, to see that the Circle of Fifths video is getting a good amount of love. And what you wrote here, Katriana, is right. I love that you found a pattern in something like a broken chord melody that you can tie back to the Circle of Fifths. One of my favorite things about the Circle of Fifths is that you keep learning more and more about how far it reaches. And you're constantly finding new patterns within. So thanks for checking out the Circle of Fifths video. Ah, here's another one from Kent Livesey, another comment on the Circle of Fifths video. Kent says, Phil, I'll be helping my sister-in-law learn piano theory, and I'm wondering if I could print your Circle of Fifths for her. I like how simple and clear it is. Can I find a printable version of it somewhere? Okay, cool. So once again, you guys are loving the Circle of Fifths video. That's great. Uh, this particular design or this graphic that you see in our video was created from scratch by our video editor, Aiden Matney. And it's a challenge because there's a lot of info in that diagram. We wanna still keep it clean and organized and you know pleasant to look at, but we still have to fit in all that info. So Aiden did a great job, and your comment here, Kent, is testimony to that. Um, but what I'll say actually is that since he made it from scratch for the video, it's not printable per se, so actually what I would have your sister-in-law do is to pause the video when the graphic is shown and then actually recreate it on a big piece of paper. And what that's gonna do is, of course, she'll then have a physical copy, which is your goal here in your, in your question. But the process of actually copying it down, looking up, reading what the sharps and flats are, copying it, writing it down, is gonna help her to learn it much better. So give that a shot. All right, that's enough circle of fifths talk for now. This next comment made me laugh. It was on my video for How to Play Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton. And Samuel Pratt says, isn't Phil from HD Piano? And then Mark Nagamini, and I may have butchered that last name, please excuse me, Mark, replied to Samuel and said, yeah, bro, I don't know why he's here. So that cracked me up. I laughed out loud on that one. So let me just address this briefly. I actually see quite a bit of comments coming through on our Playground Sessions YouTube channel. Hey, isn't that Phil from HD Piano? Hey, it's Phil from HD Piano. Yes, the truth is out. I did used to work at HD Piano. I was one of the first teachers and helped them grow. And I'm proud of my time there, but I'm way more proud of my time here at Playground Sessions. HD Piano is one small thing in the world of music education. They have video tutorials and they have falling blocks that fall onto the keys to help you figure out what notes to play. That's one way of learning and I'm not knocking anyone that prefers that learning style. But what I love about Playground Sessions is there's much more in the long term for piano students who want to take their piano journey much further. HD Piano may be a fine source to learn a song section maybe, but then when you go to learn a new song, you're essentially starting from scratch again. In other words, there's no skills really that you take from the last video that you can apply to learning in the next video. Playground Sessions offers it all. We have notation that is interactive and it grades you as you play. So when you learn what a C major chord looks like in notation, you will recognize it in any other song in notation as well. We're in this for the long haul here at Playground Sessions. So I encourage you guys to check it out and take advantage of the interactive app with all the bells and whistles if you really wanna learn how to play piano. And to all of my previous students from HD Piano, I hope you'll come learn with us here at Playground.
Hey, here's another comment about HD Piano. This one's coming from Closing In On Closure. That's a cool name. Closing In On Closure wrote on my video for How To Play Everything I Do, I Do It For You by Brian Adams. Closing In On Closure said, HD Piano did a tutorial of this and the way it's played is drastically different from the way you're playing it here. Is this just a simplified, easier version and way of playing it? Okay, so great question here. And this could apply beyond HD Piano versus Playground Sessions as well, of course. Uh, but yes, you are alluding to the fact that at HD Piano, they just teach you how to play the chords of a song, uh, for the most part. I think recently they've started to do some melodies in their arrangements as well. But at Playground Sessions, we arrange a full song for you to play at the piano. It's a full solo piano arrangement. And of course, that means that it's going to be different from the exact piano part that you might hear in a recording. Uh, HD Piano typically shows you a section of a chord progression. And that is quick to learn, but it's not the full story, is it? It's not the complete sort of picture of the song. And especially because if you have a chord progression like 1, 4, 5, a very common progression, without the melody and without some of the distinctive rhythms, it could be any song. So when they teach you a song that is 1, 4, 5, eh, is it really the song? Here at Playground Sessions, we pride ourselves on giving you all of the important, meaty stuff from the songs you love. And even within our Playground Sessions interactive app, we do have different difficulty levels of each arrangement that we provide. So this particular video that you've called out here, uh, closing in on closure, I believe it's the rookie level arrangement. And even if it's the intermediate level arrangement, Yes, you're right, we do simplify that stuff because we want all levels of players to be able to access this music and find that joy. Uh, our advanced level arrangements are pretty difficult and often contain the exact piano part that you're familiar with from a recording and a melody and some harmony and extra rhythms. So if you haven't checked out the song library, you can do so by visiting the website and checking out the song store. If you've already got the app, I encourage you to browse Use some of those song credits I know you've earned in the app and check out what we have at all levels. If something seems too easy for you, I can almost guarantee you that there's a more difficult version in the app. We try really hard to hit all levels of all players. I'm gonna change the color of the light. All right, moving on. So quickly, we have a comment from The Wobinator on my video, Popular Music Deconstructed, the 145 progression. The Wobinator says, this video was amazing. I finally learned the whole idea of how chord progressions work. All right, sweet. Wobinator, thank you for writing in. This is great to see. I always love when you guys have revelations from my tutorials. Keep watching and keep writing in. I appreciate it. All right, here's one on my video for how to play Firework by Katy Perry. Sandbox TV, two exclamation points. So Sandbox TV writes simply, more Katy Perry. A lot of uh, punctuation and exclamation in the name, but none in the comment. I love it. The reason I chose to highlight this comment in today's Q&A video is because we just launched a brand new song request site, essentially. It's not just the form that you may have been used to where you put your song name, artist, and your name, and that's it. Now there's a lot more transparency for you guys. There's a lot more visibility. You can go and see what everyone has voted on each song, and you can upvote them, similar to like a Reddit situation, okay? The songs with the most votes kind of boil to the top, and it makes it easier for us on the Playground Sessions arranging team to see collectively what you guys want. And again, you guys can see what the community wants too. Maybe there's an idea that you hadn't thought of that people are voting on, you can add your vote to that too. And there's another cool layer to this where you can actually see responses from the Playground Sessions team about what is possible for these song requests. And what I mean by that is, of course, we're bound by certain limitations with what rights we have to certain songs. So simply put, if we don't have the rights to a song, we'll add that if a song has been requested. Then you guys can see, ah, unfortunately we can't do that song. Leave comments on this video or any other video on our YouTube channel for a chance to be featured and responded to in my next Q&A video. Until then, I'm Phil. I'll see you guys soon on the channel for more content, Q&As, tutorials, live lessons, stuff by David Sides. We're going to be doing more with the Theorists, with Harry Connick Jr., Quincy Jones.